What's up music makers, it's Luke from Sojourner Tracks and welcome to another two minute tips video where I try to answer a specific question about Logic Pro in, around, but generally not even close to the two minute mark. Chicken, chicken. Today we're talking about how to humanize your software or your MIDI instruments. This is gonna be especially important for those of you who draw in your software instrument parts. If I pull this up here, you can see this is pretty typical of a part that's been drawn in by hand. And by that, I mean, you know, you're going in here with your pencil tool and manually entering note values. So the velocities are all the same. Everything is perfectly to the grid. But as you can imagine, that's a little bit too perfect for something that was played by a real human. And you'll hear what that sounds like if I play it. Right, so it's a little stiff. It's, it's lacking some dimension and personality that you would get from a real human being actually playing that. So a great tool within Logic is the humanize function. So if we go up to functions here to the MIDI transform here at the bottom, go to humanize, you'll see this interface um, has random plus or minus on three different categories. So position, which is gonna be the position in time before or behind the beat, velocity, obviously the velocity from one to 127, and then the length, so shorter or longer. Um, position and length are measured in ticks, and then velocity, like I said, is 1 to 127. These values, um, a tick is, is a very small amount of movement. So th this is not going to be anything crazy. Um, it's just going to move things ever so slightly, adjust things ever so slightly random in a random fashion that will make it sound more lifelike. And I like to move these up to uh, 20. If you grab the, uh, the bar here and just drag, I like to move these two up to 20, just, just so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, and I, the velocity to 15, that's gonna be a choice for you to make figure out what works best for you. But then if I go to select and operate, it's going to select the notes in this region and perform this random function. And as you can see, everything has shifted ever so slightly. And like I said, this is not anything crazy, but let's listen to just how much better that alone will make this sound. Okay, so you, you can hear there are there are imperfections. They're not horrible. They're not not like it made the part bad, but it made it sound more like someone was actually playing it. Um, some of the note velocities were a little bit off. Um, some things that might need to be tamed by a compressor later, which again it just adds some life and some character, some dimension to it. Now, if that wasn't enough for you, you could go back and hit uh, select and operate again. This is probably going to be a little bit too wild for uh, most cases. Not bad though, right? I mean, if you tamed this one note, that would probably be pretty good. Uh, and it's just those subtle imperfections that you miss out on when a person isn't actually sitting down at an instrument. So I find this to be extremely useful. Uh, drum kits, any software instruments that you're using, especially um, anything that's going to be out in the open, like a piano part, um, something delicate where you really need um, something that sounds like a human touch behind it. If you feel like this content has been a benefit to you, you don't have to smash the like button. You're going to break something. All you have to do is click it. 
I would really appreciate it. And if you're looking for other ways you can support the channel and what I'm doing here, head on over to SojournerTracks.com. There'll be a link in the description below. You can grab yourself some of my free guides as well as the 2020 edition of my Producer Proverbs Tips series. And I will leave links to my Patreon page where you can grab yourself some exclusive content over there as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.